I'm Grayson Ottaway. This is Marvelous Videos. Fred Jukes, the creature known as The Blob, was one of the X-Men's initial opponents. Blob became a participant in the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and it is because of this affiliation with that group that he has remained one of the X-Men's most persistent opponents for almost 50 years. The Brotherhood of Evil Mutants later on became the Freedom Force. They assisted the government in tracking down the renegade X-Men. His abilities made him among the most powerful villains to face the X-Men, with a massive physique that was resistant to pain and extremely difficult to move. We've seen Blob's body transform from an oppressive force to a shape-shifting pile of flesh and then back into an upgraded powerhouse for a while. Before though we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support this channel by subscribing to it. Very small click for you, but for us, it means a great deal. Okay, let's go. Exploring the comic book origins of this massive mutant. The Blob was created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee in 1963. At the start of 1964, he made his debut appearance. He was an X-Men foe and among the odd mutants that were depowered after M-Day. After departing his home realm, his Age of Apocalypse equivalent has subsequently replaced him in his numerous nefarious duties. Fred J. Dukes was raised in the Texas town of Lubbock. He decided to join a circus sideshow and performed under the name Blob. Professor X detected Duke's mutant strength and dispatched his pupils to find him. Fred had no genuine interest in any of the X-Men other than Jean Grey. He agreed to accompany them in a bid to spend more time with her. Professor X decided that the Blob was a mutant after a series of testing and invited him to become an X-Man. The other members of the team despised the Blob's annoying demeanor. Duke chose not to join the squad, stating that he was superior and more powerful than everyone else. The X-Men tried to detain him as he attempted to flee, so Professor X could wipe the Blob's memory of their true identities. Despite their best attempts, the Blob escaped. Fred Dukes always had assumed that he was stronger than other people, but after encountering the X-Men, he realized where his strength came from. He was adamant about not listening to anyone else's advice. He ordered that the other acts followed in his footsteps when he returned to the circus. The Blob and his followers attempted to take over the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning. The X-Men were subdued by the circus entertainers. Xavier spent his time alone within the mansion, perfecting a technology that would allow him to control a whole mob. He told Marvel Girl to rescue the rest of the X-Men, and the group was able to get the upper hand on the blob. The X-Men stopped him, and the remainder of the circus members, and all the experiences of their meeting with the X-Men were obliterated. Blob, along with the other performers, returned to their mundane lives, none of them remembering what had happened. Despite removing the Blob's recollections, Professor Xavier was aware that the Blob may retrieve his remembrances of the X-Men and return as a threat to the world once more. How did he become a member of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants? The X-Men were up against Dukes again soon enough, and he had become a permanent X-Men nemesis. Dukes soon found himself recruited into Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and he would go on to be a vital and irreplaceable member of the Brotherhood in various incarnations. He also joined other factions, such as Factor 3, and formed relationships with other mutant villains. Despite the fact that Dukes was continuously being exploited and betrayed, he became friends with another gravity-related mutant dubbed Unus the Untouchable. Dukes led several attempts to eliminate the X-Men and sometimes even tried to frame them for crimes that they did not commit. Despite being recruited into multiple groups and forming several friendships throughout his lifetime, Dukes' one trusted buddy in all of his recorded histories was Unus. Despite his recent treachery, Blob found himself teaming up with Magneto again after numerous failed efforts against the legendary mutant squad. Magneto's plot to take over the world by harnessing Alpha, the ultimate mutant's infinite power, failed when Alpha went against the Brotherhood, reducing the members to infancy. After being returned to normalcy, Duke saw himself not only rejoining the ranks of a newer and more powerful incarnation, but also facing off against other Marvel Universe heroes and villains. Before joining Mystique's newest edition of the Brotherhood, Dukes opted to take on a few hero teams, including the Defenders and the Champions 
Legends of Los Angeles, the Brotherhood was up against the X-Men while participating in a planned scheme to murder Senator Kelly. They were almost successful in their goal until they were defeated by the mutant hero squad. When he teamed up with his trusty buddy once more to fight the Hulk, Dukes was overcome with anguish after watching Unus perish as a result of his own uncontrollable powers. Dukes went on a grief-stricken rampage across the city, enraged and sad that his one trusted companion had perished. Dukes stopped his murderous rampage and surrendered calmly to the authorities after attracting the interest of Black Cat and Spider-Man. One of the most fascinating aspects of Dukes' journey was when he decided to join Mystique's government-run team, the Freedom Force. Dukes agreed to cooperate with the organization in exchange for a complete pardon for all of the crimes that he had committed, and he became a government agent sparked with capturing and imprisoning mutants or super-powered dangers. Considering that this crew was made up of founding Brotherhood members, their devotion was put to the test when they were given the job of apprehending and bringing in their creator, Magneto. Despite his participation in a Holocaust memory event, the Freedom Force proceeded with their goal, unconcerned about the current circumstances or location. Going up against some of the X-Men who also happened to be there, Magneto stopped the battle by surrendering to ensure that there would be no more dishonor and the ceremony would not be further disrupted. Following the completion of their initial operation, Freedom Force resumed their dangerous missions by trying to apprehend the X-Men as well as countless other mutants under government instructions. The group also found itself attempting to apprehend even the Avengers for a violation that they had not committed. Despite their noble intentions for the nation, the Freedom Force found themselves up against many teams of X-Men, freaks, and heroes from the Marvel Universe. It wouldn't be long before this gang suffered a significant setback. The Freedom Force encountered a brutal confrontation with the Arabic unit, known as Desert Sword, while on an operation in the Middle East. Blob was captured and taken prisoner with Pyro, and was compelled to serve as the Iraqi commander's personal security guard. This was the Freedom Force's final assignment before being dissolved when the government substituted them with yet another superhuman team known as the X Factor. To seek honor and vengeance, fellow Brotherhood participant Toad arranged for the liberation of Pyro and Dukes so that they could join his reformed Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Despite the fact that this incarnation of the Brotherhood included a formidable cast of mutants, it did not fare much better than previous Brotherhoods. The X X-Men groups X-Force and X-Factor consistently defeated the Brotherhood. When confronted with other superheroes such as Darkhawk, Sleepwalker, and Spider-Man, the Brotherhood also found themselves strengthening in prominence. Dukes undoubtedly fought his most difficult bout and suffered his most significant defeat when he faced X-Factor member Strong Guy. After Toad's failed gang split, Dukes' career as a villain didn't fare any better, as he was turned down for membership in various evil groups and new iterations of Brotherhood. When Pyro became sick with the fatal Legacy virus, the other members and Dukes attempted to have Emprion potentially heal him. Nonetheless, the Brotherhood and Blob were misled and coerced into performing Emprion's bidding. Dukes was approached by the creature that was attempting to enlist him in his takeover effort when Onslaught was formed. The Blob was now more deadly and dangerous than before, having augmented Dukes's powers in exchange for his service. Dukes would face defeat when he confronted all of the ladies in the X-Men after teaming up with Mimic, who was also working with Onslaught and had obtained heightened powers. Following Onslaught's annihilation, both Mimic's and Dukes and abilities returned to normal. Dukes really bothered about his lack of achievement and respect during the course of his career, as he kept moving forward on his non-directed aims as a minion or a muscular henchman. Dukes continued to struggle despite joining another short-lived brotherhood led ironically by Charles Xavier. Nothing would be more destructive to Dukes than when he became one of 90% of the overall mutant species who shed their powers after M-Day, as he immediately went from being highly regarded as the mutant who defeated Superman to be regarded as useless 
while attempting to join Exodus's newest organization of the Brotherhood. Jukes succumbed to despair and attempted suicide as a result of his drooping skin and lack of abilities. However, that failed because his flesh was so tough that he couldn't cut his own neck. Jukes sought to make the most of a bad situation by joining a squad of former mutants in a bid to reclaim his powers using artificial methods. Jukes managed to shed all of his extra skin and find work as a weight reduction coach and a major movie star with Kingo Soonan, all while still attracting the attention of the wrongful side of the law. Blob was last seen alongside Magneto and apparently still depowered. However, it's unknown when or how he'd regain his previous powers and carry on with his career as a key adversary for the X-Men. Jukes later appeared as a confident big brute battling Magneto as a member of the brand new Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, commanded by Joseph and Astra. It was later discovered that this Blob was a clone. Blob subsequently is on Mandrapur and works for Mystique. Blob is now enslaved to a mutant growth hormone in a bid to regain his mutant powers. Did you just call me Blob? Blob has been a fun addition in the live-action movies. The X-Men Origins Wolverine prologue began with the Vietnam War, when Fred Jukes had been a member of Team X, which was led by Major William Stryker. Fred displayed his power by merely inserting his hand into a tank's barrel, causing the blast to backfire. Fred got quite fat when the squad dissolved, having formed an eating issue, and all the while, John Wraith was attempting to pull him back into shape. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Fred's standard method of knocking out his opponents was just pounding them with his massive stomach. Later, Fred furiously provoked Logan into a boxing bout since he claimed Logan called him Blob to Wraith. However, the word actually spoken by him was Bub. Wolverine won over him by repeatedly pounding him on the head, and he subsequently demanded information regarding the island. Stryker and Victor are operating together, catching mutants and testing on them, according to Fred, who claimed to have obtained the information through Agent Zero. Dukes then reveals to Logan that he did not know the exact location of Stryker's headquarters, but that there is just one person who fled, Remy LeBeau, a superhuman and Cajun roadside hustler known as Gambit. After Dukes provided Wolverine with the knowledge he required, Wolverine and Wraith headed off to find Gambit. In an excluded scene, Victor receives a phone call from Stryker. He informs Stryker that he knows where Wolverine and Wraith are headed since Jukes told him. He then puts down the phone and begins walking towards Jukes, hinting that he is planning to torture and murder him. As per John Wraith, Blob had never been a Wolverine fan. This character was supposed to be featured in X-Men, but unfortunately did not pass the stage of concept art, which is a covert Easter egg in the official DVD release of the film. His character appears on a roster of mutants that Mystique scans through on Stryker's database in X2 X-Men United. Blob was one among those vanquished in a fight club by Angel in X-Men Apocalypse. Blob was oozing from a massive wound on the back of his skull caused from battling Angel. Thus, it's unclear whether Angel killed or just severely hurt him. On a stretcher, he was taken out of the arena. Don't know. Never had any friends. But my name is Fred. A younger version of Blob can be seen in X-Men Evolution. Voiced by Michael Dobson, we see a teenage iteration of the Blob in X-Men Evolution. The Blob also identified as Fred Jukes, in a colossal kid from Texas who joined the Brotherhood and is one of the world's toughest mutants. Blob is the Brotherhood's least intelligent member, but his brawn compensates for his lack of intelligence. His bulky physique and unappealing demeanor make him a frequent target of public criticism. His social isolation and terrible temper made him an ideal target for Mystique's recruitment into the Brotherhood. The X-Men initially treated him well until he tried to capture Jean Grey. He didn't have much luck making new friends since his run-in with the X-Men, but he became close to his Brotherhood allies, Toad and Avalanche, as the story has advanced. Blob also appears to have a vulnerable side, as seen by his obsessive treatment of Jean in the very first episode he debuted in, as well as his eventual relationship with the remainder of the Brotherhood. Ah, the massive immovable blob! 
Blob also featured in an episode from Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Blob is a part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants headed by Magneto in the Marvel Productions Universe comic Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends in a surprising cameo appearance in the episode titled The Prison Plot. Blob, along with other men of the Brotherhood, was captured and imprisoned at some time. Magneto attempted to release Blob and the remainder of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, but the Spider-Friends stopped him. In the episode, the villain Magneto constructs a force field around the prison island, confining the inmates and those attending a conference, including the Spider-Friends. Magneto seizes control of the whole East Coast's power supply and vows to destroy the planet, except if his Brotherhood of Evil Mutants is promptly released from prison. Magneto had clearly arrived to save his teammates, and the Spider Friends just had to intervene. When the members of the Brotherhood, Toad, Blob, and Mastermind try to divert them, it results in calamity. What was Blob really like? The Blob originated as a gigantic mutant that was nearly immobile. Over the years, his stature grew from that of being a regular man to that of a towering behemoth. When Onslaught enhanced the Blob's abilities, he became even larger. Following M-Day, the Blob lost his abilities and shrank to the weight and size of a regular man, although with a massive amount of extra skin. He has now shed the additional skin and has become a weight loss instructor in Japan, albeit he was recently sighted alongside the High Evolutionary and Magneto. In the recent series Magneto, Not a Hero, what looks to be a massively mutated clone of the Blob debuted. Why was Blob such a powerful mutant? Before becoming depowered, the Blob was a gamma-level mutant with mutant physiology that afforded him powers relating to his fat body's heft, strength, stamina, endurance, resilience, and indestructibility. Yet the entire scope of his abilities remained unknown. However, Onslaught certainly taught the Blob the mass-controlling and shape-shifting parts of his powers. The Blob's abilities were restored by the application of a medicine known as Mutant Growth Hormone, or MG. Age. Dukes is distinguished by his demonstration of mutant talents. All of his skills, strength, endurance, and abilities are centered on his abnormally fat frame. The entire degree of his abilities is unknown to this day. Initially, the Blob had limited tremendous power in relation to his size. However, he has just experienced additional mutation, significantly expanding his height and bulk, as well as enhancing his ability to superhuman levels. The Blob can raise and push 5 tons, making it potentially superhuman class 75. The Blob's mutant abilities are related to his fat body's heft, strength, durability, and indestructibility. His primary power is the capacity to become nearly immobile at command while in touch with the Earth. He accomplishes this by binding himself to the world under him with force or intent, resulting in a monodirectional increase in gravity beneath him. This gravitational field has a radius of around 5 feet from his point of balance. If there is enough power to yank him, it will take the Earth beneath his heels in a region equal to the circumference of the field. The blob can stretch the gravitational field under him more than 5 feet by concentrating hard. The blob's body contains various odd characteristics. The very first is the incredible resilience to damage. The blob's epidermal fat tissues can absorb the shock of bazookas, cannonballs, rifle bullets, and even torpedoes. The largest of these bullets recoils from his body with a force half that of the initial hit. The smaller ones embed themselves in his fat tissue, allowing him to discharge them by simply by flexing his muscles. Near the pain threshold, the blob's pain receptors do not convey any touch awareness to his brain. His epidermis fat tissue is robust enough to recover to its usual shape within seconds of impact deformation. It is almost immune to physical harm. The blob's flesh cannot be penetrated penetrated, lacerated, hypothermic, or tormented by any skin illness, owing to the skin's extreme elasticity and durability, as well as the extremely rapid pace at which the skin cells renew and replace themselves. His skin is slightly more sensitive to heat. It is still being determined whether the blob's capacity to absorb impact has an upper limit. While he might certainly withstand a head-on crash with a bus going at 100 miles an hour, or even a 50-foot diameter highly ferrous meteorite, 
by dropping on top of him at top speed, it is unknown if he could withstand a collision with an item flying at near light speed. Furthermore, it's unknown if his skin's heat resistance could withstand the 11 million degree warmth at ground zero of a multi-megaton nuclear detonation. The conclusion. Blob is undoubtedly an interesting character with great potential for exploration. His villainous streak is unmatched and he's willing to persist against all odds in order to create a name, fame and legacy for himself. It's a shame that this character has not received much limelight or time to shine, both in films and on the small screen. His enigmatic backstory with the circus, brutal personality and potential to shine make him a rich character for something like an exploration, an anti-hero or villain origin story, or maybe even as a mentor for new and budding villains. In any case, we at Marvelous Videos are rooting for the crazy, malicious and sadly desperate blob and hoping very much to see him in upcoming live action Marvel content soon. If you like our content, please don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Do have a good one. Did you just call me? Blob.